it's less about the income, it's more about the behavior. So the first concept I wanna talk about is how consistency outpaces perfection. When you're developing a habit, people sort of get in a position where they're like, oh, I don't know if I got all the ducks in a row, like, oh, I've mucked up, I should quit, I should give up. Like everyone else, it seems so easy, but the reality is it's more of a behavioral thing. Instead of you trying to save 30% immediately, just incrementally work towards it. And how that works is you get transparency. So get clarity over where the money's going. And you think you're gonna have to withhold a lot of your lifestyle. You think you're necessarily gonna miss out on the great things of life, but the reality is you don't actually have to. If you strategically look at your finances, break it down, know exactly where your money's going, and then assess it with the 80-20s. So by 80-20, I mean 20% of most clients in your business provide 80% of the revenue. But if you apply that to your life, 20% of the key things that you can assign your money to will provide 80% of what you need in life, the fulfillment, the joy, spending time with friends and connection. So if you're ticking those boxes and work out what your 80-20 is, it's less about perfection, it's more about consistency and transparency. The second one is you need to have a reason to suffer. Irrespective of who you are, at some point in your life, things are gonna suck. If you're a rich person that's been cuddled your whole life, it's a lot easier for them to get thrown off. It's a lot easier for them to be reactive to certain things in their life. So no matter who you are, tragedy will find its way into your life. So the important thing is you need to have a reason for you to forego pleasure or for you to go through suffering. So that's really sitting down with your why. Like what drives me is why people do what they do and trying to help them. And my big goal is to let every New Zealander had the opportunity to live a fulfilling life. And that's just not financial. That's also emotional. That's about connection. That's about finding purpose. But that's my why. That's why I'm motivated on 45 grand a year to put any money I have towards the business and growing it and developing it to be able to help people. And that's why sometimes, you know, I might not go out. That means sometimes I might not get the fancy thing that I want and I gear it all towards the business. So you need to find a reason to suffer. It doesn't have to be a perfect vision. You don't have to know exactly where you're gonna live. You don't have to know exactly what your partner is who's gonna be or the family that you're gonna have. You just need to be really clear on a reason why. Like, where do you feel most alive? A good example of finding purpose is look for a period in your past when you were younger where it had a significant impact on your life and if only you could help people so they don't experience that same thing, that's when you feel most awake. That's when you really enjoy your life. And if you actually apply that framework, you'll find something closer to your purpose. It might not be a job, might not be a career, might not be a tangible thing, but you develop a value set or an interest using that as a framework. So, find a reason to suffer, because you're gonna suffer no matter what. And then find the string. So it's very easy when you're about to purchase something that you start visualizing it. You know, you're thinking of that chocolate bar, you're on a diet, like me, you start thinking about a chocolate bar, and you visualize it, you imagine it, it's vivid, you start thinking about how it's gonna taste, like you're gonna eat it, maybe you wouldn't go as far as me, but <laughs> you get to a point where you're like, man, this chocolate bar seems so very vivid in my mind, and then you start moving, and then you start finding the solutions as you go. So that's, that's a sequence that leads you to an outcome that you don't want, but you can use that sequence to lead to an outcome that you do want. So you can either, visualize, make it vivid, start incremental actions to move you there and then find the answers as you go. But the more important thing is what is the underlying driver that's making you go in the direction you don't want to go so it's fulfilling some sort of emotional need. It's commonly referred to as a shadow where Carl Jung, one of the pioneers of psychology, um, he suggests that there's an experience in your past that really hurt so you develop the defense mechanism, whether it's being arrogant, whether it's being impulsive, whether it's insecurity or bringing yourself down, for whatever reason, that defense mechanism was developed to protect you against that hard event. Now, over time, it no longer serves that best interest, but leads to you doing impulsive buying. You like, you feel the uncomfortable emotion, you don't want to experience it, so you go out and impulsively buy things. So if you start digging for that trigger, finding where you had that trigger, why you had that trigger, where you felt that trigger, and start following an analogy of the truth hurts, the more emotional resonance you get to something, the closer you get to the truth, to that emotion. And then all that emotion needs is to see the light of day. So think of a shadow, it's hidden in the dark, it's not expressed, it develops these interpretations that build up over time. So you incrementally share it to the world and prove it wrong, and then it has less power of you. Or you have it come up 
you get triggered, you think of the chocolate bar, you think of McDonald's, you think of the shopping, the shoes, the whatever gets you excited, and then you're like, oh, I'm using that mechanism I learned that I do. I can pause. I don't have to start taking the steps. I don't have to start taking the imagination. I don't have to start taking action towards where I want to go. I can pause and stop the snowball. The final step is reward. So it's very easy to start punishing yourself. You're like, okay, I've got to save, 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 save for this vision. But if you don't have some sort of enjoyment along the way, some sort of dopamine, Dopamine is a chemical in the body that helps reinforce a certain behavior. So it's like the pleasure chemical. So when you do something, it's like, yo, keep doing this. This is good for us. So you need to have a certain component of dopamine. But what actually happens if you overstimulate dopamine, like a drug user, they start using dopamine as a stimulant. Their window narrows. So that stimuli needed to achieve that dopamine hit needs to be more immense because their baseline's a lot higher. So you can't actually want to reset it. But you don't want to lead it to being complacency. So you sort of mix it up make it random even if you want to have a reward where you know you spin the thing like with the arrow and it picks the reward that you're going to have or you flip a coin and what the reward might be and then one that randomizes it two that resets the dopamine so it doesn't narrow your window but also it reinforces the behaviors that you've been doing so it's like good job on foregoing certain pleasures or certain spending because you've got this dopamine hit you've got this reward so it keeps you going and the final piece is just tax yourself i just tax myself 30 percent. i get paid monthly take out 30 percent, put it straight into savings and i can spend that money if i want but i'm in the habit the consistency not perfection of actually saving and then when I want to spend it, I can and I don't feel guilty.